it's about that time. Savings, savings. What's happening in your city? Savings, savings. Savings, savings. You got love for your city? Savings, savings. Good evening. Welcome to another episode of City Views. Coming at you, ladies and gentlemen, on our traditional Tuesday evening, right here from the fine Cable 5 Altice Studios. And with me on this wonderful journey into the community are my two most capable co-hosts, the lovely and most talented Miss Melissa Crofts. Good evening. Bearing good tidings this evening. <laughs> and, and the most optimistic. <laughs> the most optimistic Mets fan this side of the Mississippi, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Mr. Wilbert Bowles, also known as Weebo. No. <laughs> the man with so much flair and phlegm that we can't quite we can't quite make it all we can't describe it okay then he just has that extra something special genesis quad that we just you just can't put your finger on it nonetheless we want to welcome you to another show this evening and okay we're like right in the midst of election season so uh we wanted to take this month to feature the candidates, uh, give them an opportunity to meet with you all and uh, let you know what they're all about and uh, discuss some of the issues so that we can do here what the original mandate of City Views uh, was and that's to bring you uh, the best information on the issues that are affecting you right here in Torrington and Litchfield County. So. We want to make sure that uh, we're doing our best to, uh, to give you that opportunity and to build that platform that uh, you're able to engage us into uh, each and every week. So uh, once again, we thank you for tuning in. Uh, as always, we want to thank the sponsor of City Views. Absolutely. Toth Insurance Agency. Steve Toth and the crew working real hard to take care of you. Thanks, Steve. Thank you so much, Toth Insurance. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, you guys are very much aware that City Views uh, couldn't put on anything without their help. So thank you once again, Toth Insurance Agency. <clears throat> also, Catherine Pezzi is back off vacation. No. Our yeah. administrative assistant, Catherine Pezzi, the one who keeps everything uh, on point here for us at City Views. Hi, Bill. Uh, <laughs> 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 Je she's just returning uh, from her vacation, and I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it was uh, the loneliest two weeks of my life. <laughs> yes. That's sad. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was pretty Cheesy much eyes. curled up uh, in the fetal position like a baby. Uh, that's why you guys haven't seen you know much of me the last two weeks, except for the show, you've been lost, man. you know, I mean, I have to like literally, you know, that your phone. <laughs> <laughs> when he knows where it is. <laughs> well, I found it today. Mm. I'm making progress, right? One day at a time. One, yes. day, One day, day at a time. Don't rush the good <laughs> stuff. So uh, needless to say, um, October 1st, mm. 
and uh, we're heading uh, heading around third and heading home heading for home. the most part. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine, um, and he said he walked into Lowe's uh, a couple days ago. This is a couple days ago, and it's like they just forgot about. Halloween and Thanksgiving and went straight to the Christmas decoration. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm really? Like, I'm not ready for Christmas. You know what I mean? I'm ready for twinkle lights. I always like the white lights. I can have white lights all year long. I was going to say, you could have that all year long. Mm -hmm. I mean, and wouldn't that be nice to celebrate Christmas, uh, even if we celebrated it for a week? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, a week of gift giving and understanding and, you know, um, wouldn't that do our society such good in these politically toxic times? Just give it love. Yeah. yeah. You know, what, what's wrong with giving? It can't be love. that love difficult, Christmas can day. it? Yeah. You know? Well, the Beatles did sing a song about it. They did. That's all you need is love. Yes. I, I, would, uh, I would concur with that 100%. So um, doing our part here to make sure that everyone's feeling the love. Feeling the love. <laughs> the love is, a, is around us. So, Weekend in Review, folks. What's, what's, uh, what's going on in your world this weekend, uh, last weekend, Rebo? What's, what's happening? What happened, huh? Yeah, what's happening? Oh, uh, Saturday, me and the wife went down to a, um, um, North Agama. Yeah. To a campground. A friend of ours on a campground. Mm -hmm. Hang down for a while. And, um, it been busy. Yeah? Been busy. And then uh, they had the um, uh, open mic at uh, Bocce last week. Well, you know, yeah, fun. You, you, you need to kind of elaborate on that, Weebo, because <coughs> I don't think people know that you're a mountain man at real hard heart. No. Yeah. No. You know, you people, there's a lot to you that people would never even conceptualize. Oh, you know, man. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll roll out the uh, biography soon, mm. you know. People would be totally amazed at mm. all your talents and <clears throat> and whereabouts. Yeah, dude, a lot of stuff behind the scene. <laughs> so, um, and you? Well, I actually had part of my Saturday off, which yeah. is a rare, rare occasion. So I took my little dog, my little dog, took her to the rail trail in Millerton, nice. New York. Um, it, it goes a very long way. It goes yes. all the way down past Amenia. Wow. Uh, but we just walked for a little bit. She gets mm. spooked on these walks, but I like to get her out and have fun with, with my little dog. It's Aww. just all about, you know, talking about all you need is love. I just mm. get all this little love from this little dog, and she's just adorable. I've turned into a doggy mom. Mm. It, it, the dog has changed you, Melissa. It, she has. She's yeah, made me a little did. softer. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Softer? Yeah, a lot softer. Is that what you would... Describe it as yes, softness. yeah. She's made me softer, <laughs> and I and I love. I just love loving on her and her okay. little face. Right. So cute. Yeah, she's kicked, but Parker to the curb, huh? She's so sweet. <laughs> Parker, who? <laughs> who is Parker? <laughs> I have no idea who Parker. Yeah, he's gone. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we had a uh, really cool thing going on at uh, WAPJ this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, another training session, uh, the biggest training session that we've had yet at the station and uh, some 40 people uh, in the community uh, wanting to uh, possibly do shows and wow. volunteer at the station. So uh, the station's growing by leaps and bounds. Bravo. Mm. Yes. So uh, definitely uh, always proud to uh, promote WAPJ because I think that uh, <clears throat> for a nonprofit to survive in the community of that nature and mm. to contribute to the community the way they, they do on a consistent basis um, is, is definitely a good thing to, uh, to advocate for. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> I believe that the programming, which is obviously the strength of the station now, uh, will even become even more diverse now with uh, the new volunteers that are coming to, uh, to hang out. So Excellent. Very cool. Excellent. Um, I do think we're going to take a little programming note. Um, instead of taking a break right now, we're going to do our segment with mm -hmm. Michelle, What's Cooking? And then we're going to bring on our guest tonight, um, 
Paul Cavanero, city council member mm -hmm. and candidate for city council, Stephen Ivey. Mm -hmm. yep. So mm -hmm. we're going to take uh, the call now from Michelle, I do believe, mm -hmm. and uh, let's see what's cooking. Great. Good evening, Michelle. Good evening, and how are we tonight? Very, very well. What's cooking? <laughs> <laughs> well, right, right about now, there's a lot cooking. I know. I am at the Edison Grill at the YMCA fundraiser. Oh, right. Okay. You know, uh, I was Representative Ford and myself are here supporting such a great cause. Yeah, you got to tell everyone that uh, you know we wish we could have been there. Unfortunately, we had a show to do tonight. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I think that they'll understand. <laughs> Yeah, um, and the uh, the great Ma Brian Mattiello is uh, entertaining us with his acoustics. So did, it's been a good night. Did you have a chance to try the uh, the sour Broughtons? Well, I did a little bit of the bratwurst. Oh, you did. Um, mm. I did, I did, and some of that German potato salad Ooh. and some potato cakes. Ooh. <coughs> so now. since we're doing smell vision I'm telling you right now, it was great stuff. <laughs> well, you know, uh, you can tell Martin uh, that they can put back a little bit for your boy, you know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> I'll, go let, I, I'll go let Marty Connor know that he needs to deliver. Mm. <laughs> oh, he's delivering all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, this is kind of cool, Michelle, because now we're, uh, we're kind of doing like a, a two-in-one here uh, where you're doing like an on-site uh, simulcast. And uh, now we can, you know, talk a little bit about that, and then we can talk a little bit about uh, the big day today. So apparently this adds to my resume, so that's great. And, um, <laughs> you know, it's actually it's an incredible event. You know, the parking lot here is full. They've had incredible food, great entertainment. They have you know, the long-sized Jenga and then cornhole and all that other stuff, and so they're still going strong. You know, they're doing... Um, Right now, they're they're getting ready to do some of the, like the raffle prizes and things like that. So it's been overall a really really good night. I can only see two spots in the parking lot down here at the Edison Grill, you know. And so we can't thank the Edison Grill enough for supporting such an incredible cause as well. Absolutely, and uh, this is uh, in conjunction with the Northwest YMCA, and uh, all proceeds and benefits will be going to that cause, if I'm not mistaken. That is exactly right. So we obviously Greg is here, we, you know, and so you have the Y very well represented. And, you know, it's it is it's just a great community cause. I see Sullivan mm. Honda here with a tent and they have a couple of their new vehicles out, too, for people to look at. So, you know, obviously as we do as we do things, and it's really about the community getting behind, a, you know, an organization. And that's what's happening here. Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, uh, Michelle, today was. Um the um the first day of the implementation of of the the taxes uh here in the state um and uh some of them are getting some some mixed reviews of course but let's let's start before we go to that let's start on a couple of other things yes this is also breast cancer awareness month yes mm. mental health awareness month and the governor has also declared it italian american heritage month so I think that before we get into the things that we would call like, you know, the, the things that people look as a negative, let's talk about the positive and the great things that are happening and being recognized today. Mm. So, yo, this, and, is, um, th this is your segment. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, you know, I'm not, I'm not steering away from what actually is reality, mm. but I am saying that I do want us to ensure that we don't forget those things as well. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for bringing that so, up. But, um, but this is also the day that we start the increase of minimum wage as well. Yes, so that yes. For those folks that really rely on that dollar to put food on the table and to be able to make ends meet, you know, that happens today, too. We, we recognize that it's not the instant jump to $15 an hour, but that's the beginning of the, uh, the gradual increases that happen over the next few years. What, what I uh, like about some of the legislation, uh, Michelle, is the fact that you guys did put some safeguards in the legislation so that there could be some adjustments made. Could you uh, address that, talk about that to our audience, please? You know, if we recognize, if the, comp, if the comptroller declares a deficit over a few quarters, um, that minimum wage will not get increased. I mean, there's a variety of different things. It's pretty technical in nature. Um, 
But at the end of the day, this was really about an outlying year, not an instantaneous jump. Um, you know, and so when we were talking to businesses, obviously there were some businesses that said, hey, look, I just don't want to do this. But there were other businesses that were very clear to say, we can do this, but we need to do this gradually, and I need to be able to plan and prepare. Um, but there is those safeguards in place that say if there are certain things that happen in our, you know, in the governmental structure and the, re, you know, the returns, if you will, that other safeguards do kick into place. Um, that's a pretty hefty, long list and rather detailed. Uh, and if obviously, like always, I say, if anybody has any questions about that, just let me know and I'm happy to give the details. Well, <clears throat> Michelle, uh, as you know, um, the, uh, let's just say the extremes uh, in both political parties and, and on all three levels, national, state, and, and local. Um, it, it's making legislation a, a little difficult when you have these polarizing interests that, that aren't coming together. But talk a little bit about how in this particular piece of legislation uh, that, you, that you compromised uh, with, uh, with your uh, colleagues on the other, other aisle to, uh, to bring this, to make this happen. Minimum wage specific? Yes. Well, you know, I, w I would say this, you know, you're obviously not going to appease all the people. Um, but there were things that were recognized that you had to have businesses at the table. We did need to push it out in the long term years. It did need to be indexed. I mean, that was a huge thing for me as well. You know, that I just did not think that it was right that as a business, you did not know what was happening year after year after year. And there's no way that it was appropriate for us to continue to go back and say, oh, we're going to change it this year. We're going to change it this year. We're going to change it this year. So that's why the indexing law was put into effect as well. So you know what those gradual increases are until it gets to be $15 an hour. And then from there, you know that it's going to be indexed accordingly. So there is nothing that's going to, to be just pulled out of the wind and say, oh, you know what, we're going to change that this year. People know, they know how to plan, and they can be able to prepare. So if the economy continues <clears throat> to uh, pace out as it is, uh, when uh, is the, the maximum increase due uh, to hit? 2020, I want to say 2023. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, and mind you, I don't have that final piece of paper in front of me. Mm -hmm. But I know that it was a, it was a three or four year outlook to right. get to that $15 an hour. And mm -hmm. then it would be indexed from there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I understand uh, some of the pushback that, uh, that that issue is bringing in terms of uh, redefining who that mandate um, is allocated to. Because some people feel like if you're working for, say, a Walmart or McDonald's, then yeah, you should be able to make you know, $15 an hour. But if you're working for a small local business, that the, 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 the dynamics of that market may not be able to, uh, to, to implement that. Uh, did you look well, we at also we did we did put into provisions part-time workers seasonal workers um and the ages of those workers as well so we did put provisions in for all of that um because you know quite frankly i've always been one to argue and i did get some pushback you know when i was pushing back to somebody and saying you know what maybe my then 16 year old son didn't need 15 dollars an hour but maybe my 19 year old daughter did um you know, and I had people say to me, well, how do you know that that one person did not need that? And we also took into consideration if you are an emancipated youth, that you were able to acquire that, you know, that raise accordingly, and you would not necessarily fall into the line of seasonal or youth-employed workers as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that uh, it was a tough piece of legislation to carve out, and uh, even now uh, I think that uh, there are issues that uh, may have to be addressed. However, I think that it's important that people understand why you took the position that you took. Not just you, meaning you personally, but I mean in general, why our representatives vote the way they do on, on pieces of legislation. So, um, Well, you know, and at the end of the day, it's really about listening to the people that are in your community. Right. And I understand that, you know, we have some small business owners that are not very happy about about what we've done. But I also have, you know, 
two to one or three to one of the employees that are saying this could really benefit me and my family. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that becomes very difficult decision to make when you're trying to when you're trying to really balance out what the you know the rights and the wrongs are. And you don't mm-hmm. want to see a small business go under, but you also don't want to see a family go hungry. And there is no reason why a family of three or four are making less than thirty or forty thousand dollars and trying to put food on their table. Right, I hear you. So uh, we do have a, another call coming in, Michelle. But before we get to that, uh, do you want to uh, talk briefly about the uh, new taxes that were uh, being implemented today? Well, that would be a very long conversation, probably. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, you know, I think that we, as we spoke earlier, you know, really quick, we heard about the pushback on the, you know, misrepresented uh, grocery tax, if you will. So that one literally one cent on the dollar that went up or that one percent that went up on the prepared food um, issue is the only thing that you're going to see that happened in the grocery stores or in your fast food restaurants. Um, You know, so we do see that. We recognize that there is, again, it's good and bad, but at the end of the day, it was not something that is brand new. It just went up one percent or one cent on the dollar. Mm. Um, And there is the the online tax, um, but it's you know, and I think that, that that comes to a different situation. You know, when you see all of your brick and mortar stores going under because everybody's buying online, why should the online stores get off scot free when our brick and mortar stores are, are really struggling? So that was a you know, that was something to kind of balance out some of those issues as well. Well, <clears throat> all month we're going to be talking to uh, the candidates uh, running for office for this uh, this year's uh, election. So. Uh, let's talk a little bit more uh, about these issues on our, our subsequent conversations. How's that sound? Anytime and absolutely. And Representative Horn is actually here as well. And she said to let you all know. She said hello and give you a shout out. Well, uh, tell her to hey, save me Maria. some some sour broten. I will do it. All right, y'all. Have a great night. And obviously, please call my office, send emails, send fa- you know Facebook, reach out, whatever anybody needs. I'm happy to give the information. Great. Right. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. All right. You too. Have a great night. Keep it Bye. cooking. All right. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay. And thank you for calling Cineviews. Brookfield Monk made a mistake. I'm sorry? Hello? Okay. Well, I wish I didn't cut our conversation short. I thought that was going to be a substantive call. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, uh, as the saying goes, that's showbiz. (laughs) (laughs) Live television. What more could you ask for? Exactly. That's right. We bring it to you straight. Keep us on our toes. That's right. That's right. So uh, we're going to uh, prepare for our guest this evening, uh, City Council Member Paul Cavanero and uh, City Council Candidate. Uh, Stephen uh, Ivane. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm really looking forward to talking to these gentlemen. Because How do you pronounce his last name? Ivane. Ivane. Do, do you have a problem with how I'm pronouncing it? Oh, names. Mr. Bowles? I'm bad with names. Are you? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh I'm bad with names, yeah. Certain names. Certain names? Certain names, yeah. What, like Daniel? Oh, that's easy. Daniel. It's oh, okay. Dan. <laughs> he prefers Dan. Well, I was just testing Weibo. <laughs> I know he was. See, Weibo fell for it. He called. He said he went for Daniel. Yeah, yeah well. Daniel. Yeah. yeah. So he obviously yeah. forgot the the real name yeah. of like the guy who makes it happen here for us. Exactly. Dan, he's the man. I don't think we can Dan the man. He got his uh, uh, summer shirt on there. That's I right. know. I love the Hawaiian shirts. Yeah, it's 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 popping, dude. Moving Cheerful. Back he looks like he's getting ready to uh, star in a uh, Beach Boys video. Mm. Getting ready. To go, <laughs> I was ready thinking to go. more like Hawaii Five-O. No, he's getting ready to go to Kokomo. Kokomo. Kokomo? Oh, he c- I could totally see you uh, yeah. in Kokomo, Dan. Playing the congas, you know, and the AM or PM. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Um, so we, we we must take a serious tone now mm. as we prepare for our guests coming up mm-hmm. but uh, we're going to take a quick break yep um and then we're going to return and we're going to uh talk with with steven and paul and mm-hmm. and get the uh and get the 411 yeah. great
How's that sound? Sounds All right. great. All right, great. Thank you once again for tuning in. Stay tuned. We'll be right back right after this. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but... You know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. it's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you guys mm -hmm. know statistically friendly kids have more friends? Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Thank you. We're back. And uh, thank you, Melissa, for uh, getting off stage right before we came back on. <laughs> she was like right here in the middle, like uh, she's doing her thing. She was going to do a little dance for us, too, but we, I guess we're not going to get that lucky tonight, guys. <laughs> <laughs> So, it's that time of the year, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. um, baseball, apple pie, and Chevrolet, <laughs> and the elections. Mm -hmm. What a combo. Mm. And we wanted to take this opportunity uh, for the month of October to give you an opportunity to meet the candidates uh, and hear what their views are, how uh, their take on the issues um, and hopefully we can get a little back and forth going um, with our uh, off with our website and uh, you guys can ask us questions that we can then relay on to our guests here on the show so I, I want to thank you guys because this is we were able to get you guys today because me and you know sometimes I do make these errors I'm thinking that next week is the first week in October. <laughs> Not today. October snuck in <laughs> at the last minute. So, uh, and then uh, Weibo being uh, Johnny on the spot said, we got to fill this, uh, we got to fill spot. this. Yeah, man. So next thing I know, I'm here getting the call back. Uh -huh. And he goes, man, uh -huh. I got Steve and Ivan and, and uh, Paul yeah, Cabrera. Yeah, Steve, yes, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, you know. <laughs> We're, we're, we're glad to please. Glad <laughs> just, hey, to, we're just hanging around outside <laughs> and nothing else to do. Nothing else to do. That's right. Well, we're certainly glad that uh, you had the opportunity. Sure. And uh, Paul, especially for you, this is kind of a long time coming because uh, as you very familiar with, you know how far back City Views goes, yep. and uh, you know the origins of the show sure. and uh, how it's developed through, through, through yes. the years. So uh, now in this uh, reiteration of the show, we want to uh, have a little more community engagement. We still want to be issues focused, but we also want to uh, highlight those uh, people, places, and activities that are unique to Torrington and the Litchfield County. Mm -hmm. And uh, we feel that uh, there's a, a great story here in the Northwest Corner to tell, and we feel like the rest of the state should, should know about it. 
So uh, having this uh, time to dedicate to the candidates, I think, is very timely because, um, well, let's be honest, um, things are, are in the political environment are changing at warp speed. Mm -hmm. And uh, as the old saying goes, you know, all politics are local. <laughs> no doubt. And uh, sometimes people feel that they can't really uh, have any type of impact uh, on the system, but I think uh, you two gentlemen uh, demonstrate that you can um, have an impact, uh, but you gotta dig down and you gotta do it within the, uh, the, the confines of, of your community. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul, talk to our audience a little bit about uh, your, your take on the council, your tenure on the council, and uh, why it's important uh, to you to, uh, to work and volunteer in the community to make a difference. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for having us. Um, it's terrific. Yeah, let's see here. The, um, it's, I'm, I'm constantly amazed. I, I was on, I began on the Board of Education 14 years ago. Uh, and I got on the Board of Education because I was a single parent and my two kids were in the system. And at the time, I had a number of teachers th that were uh, talking to me first about my kids, but then more generally about uh, how education um, and, and certain mandates like No Child Left Behind, how they were impacting the school. And I was asked to get involved at the uh, Southwest School on a... Um, a kind of local ad hoc committee. The principal asked me to be one of the parent participants in that. There were about maybe eight or ten of us involved. So I did that for a couple of months and then at some point somebody on the Democratic ticket said, hey, why don't you, we have an opening on Board of Ed. Do you want to do it? And, you know, foolishly I said yes. <laughs> and, <yeah. laughs> volunteer. Yes, I volunteered. for punishment. <laughs> yeah, so my involvement, my involvement in politics began with education in Torrington because, and, and that goes way back you know, through my family, my parents didn't go to college, none of my uncles went to college, you know, um, it was the immigrant story, you know, and uh, education was the key to, to, you know, advancement for your family post-World War II. And, you know, people talk a lot about, well, just the beginning, I don't want to get, get involved in, in that discussion. I was going to talk about immigrants and immigration. People forget, you know, my immigrant grandparents, like so many immigrants, period. I, I think there's a, a total misconception that they think that the adult immigrants who come here want a handout. When I keep hearing that, it bothers me so much because when my grandparents, and, and I, I, you know, I was able to know two of them before they passed, you know, I was young, but I, I got to know them. But my parents told me this, you know, when they came here, absolute dirt peasants from, from Italy, you know, couldn't speak the language. Uh, they came here not for a handout, but they came here because they knew that they weren't, they came here for education, that their kids, in Europe at the time, like so much of the world, you know, they weren't able to go to school beyond third or fourth grade. Literally, my grandparents couldn't, and they knew their kids wouldn't be able to go through, be through. And America was, that was the opportunity. The opportunity was the education system, you know. So in my family, it became extremely important to you know, pay attention to school, to take it seriously, to do well, and my and my my cousins, my generation did do very very well, and then you know, so when I became a single parent, it's it's just been through in, in my family. So I got on the board of ed, and I started fighting for, you know, to improve education in Torrington. That got me to a certain point. I, I'm taking too much time, I know, but that got me to a certain point where I realized that the problems affecting education in Torrington are the problems affecting education throughout the state and, and ultimately uh, throughout the federal government. There's a state and federal mandates that drive so much of what we can and what we cannot do, you know? Yep. And, and that's where I started to really push back and it started to really um, gnaw at me because that was the absolute antithesis of local control, was the fact that we in our own community couldn't, you know, structure and design and implement an education system that we thought was best for our yeah. town. And we had to, you know, kowtow to all these other kinds of regulations. And there was a reason why those regulations are in place, but at the same time, 
it, it took away from local control. So I, my whole experience for those 10 years on the board, five of which was chairman, was always trying to fight for more and more local control to, to control our own destiny within our own public. And then I got to a certain point where uh, it finally I felt that I, I couldn't go any further. I had pretty much, um, quite frankly, pissed off enough administrators um, <laughs> where, where well, I, I had reached oh a certain my. limit. I had reached the limit, and I knew when that limit was. And that's when I started thinking, well, let me go about this from the city side. Right. Okay. Let me see if I can go about trying to r change how we're delivering education in Torrington and restructure our curriculum to modernize it and make it and do the things that we had to do to make this a more vibrant educational system. And that's how I got on city council. So it continues to be a, uh, a driving passion of mine. Through the on the council. Now I was wrong. To be honest with you, I don't even know what camera I'm on. No, there you are. Uh, <laughs> I was wrong that the city and, and I, I keep pushing back on my fellow councilmen um, to try to to try to really integrate the city council with the board of education, and and because it's extremely important that we work together. Because the only way we're going to change this, okay, is by working together to figure out how we can do sure. public-private partnerships. Uh, and, and redesign and, and rethink a curriculum that is, that is you know, uh, work specifically for our town, our community, and, and our state. So that's how I got involved in all this. Now, what you're talking about, though, wouldn't that be difficult uh, to implement without a city manager? Wouldn't you need a, a city manager form of government in order to tie in the board with the city council? I do indeed think that would make it easier, yes. You know, does, does it have to? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so at all. Honestly, Jacques. I mean, quite frankly, it, it's it would be a minor it would be a minor tweak to our charter. Your charter, yeah. What I'd actually push for, and I never quite got through on the council level, is the state has set up that um, ultimately the board of education budget is passed by the board of finance, which is appointed by the mayor. That goes back a long, long way. It, it goes back. Its origins are you know in the McCarthy era, where they wanted to keep political um, you know management and 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 you want to keep those separate they, they want to keep it separate yeah so that educators could decide what they wanted what was the best to you know curriculum to teach the kids that's how that all began so they divorced it from the elected official you know realm that's what they did and so that makes a lot of sense of that but now the education system has gotten so complex because so much of what is in our education system is really social service work okay dealing with so many of the social issues that we have in Torrington that the two have become it's important for the for the for the for the the council to set long-term goals that's what I'm talking about not having not having city council oversight of the budget necessarily but to monitor and work with and establish long-term strategic goals short-term tactical you know allowing uh, plans innov to allowing, get innov there. allowing innovation to take place in the in education. innovation yeah and how you prioritize you know how you prioritize your entire city budget based on what you have to do quite frankly and, and I, I'll stop talking because I, I want to give Steve a chance to introduce himself and talk too on, on, on these issues. But at the end of the day, since we've gone down this road already, um, I, I'm a very, I, I, strongly, I strongly believe that in terms of developing Torrington to make it the kind of town that we all want it to be, mm -hmm. we cannot do that. We cannot do that unless we have a, a much more vital, much more imaginative, and much more relevant curriculum and, and way of delivering education within Torrington so that we don't have this hemorrhaging of students to go to other districts. And we can't do it strictly through the Board of Education anymore because the money's not there because so much of the money is going to state and federal mandated programs. So therefore that, in, that there necessitates bringing in, you know, private, you know, partnering with, with private concerns. You need a 21st century education model. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and again, and, and at the point where you realize that there has to be that interface, okay, mm -hmm. of the public and private uh, to, to modernize our curriculum within our schools. At that point, now you're talking about getting the city council, talking to the Board of Education on a regular basis, again, about long-term strategy, short-term goals, you know, and, and let the Board of Finance ultimately, you know, uh, approve the budget. That would be that's what I'm trying to do. Well, I love your passion, Paul. I really do. And I think education is definitely the uh, beginning of where you want, look to implement the norms for tomorrow. Yep. Um, and I think what social media has inadvertently done 
is ha it has increased the need for more community-based initiatives mm -hmm. in the school systems. Mm -hmm. The school can no longer be isolated by itself outside of the other sectors in your community. That's absolutely right. And, um, and we can see how isolated they've gotten now because you can't even get into a school now without being, you know, announced in. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and to think that our society's gotten to that point is troubling to me personally. Without a doubt. But uh, Steve, um, and I, I, I think one of the things that, um, that upsets people because we all know how corruption can, how power can corrupt, <laughs> and how corruption mm -hmm. is power unleashed. And people feel like they have no control over that. But what I try to uh, instill in them is that the system is fine, but you need good people running that system. And Steve, um, I'm curious to know why you think you can make a difference uh, on the city council. Uh, but I, uh, while I'm asking you that, I, I do think that it is important um, that, that people like yourself step up and put their skills on the line in a way to offer voters an alternative so that you're not continually putting people in office that are ensconced in special interests and not looking out for the needs of the whole community. Right. So talk to our audience a little <coughs> well, bit about, about what, what motivates you, know. you. So my background, I'm third generation Torrington resident, yep. lived here my whole life. Um, went to THS, graduated. My kids went to THS, doing great. So um, locally involved, participate in volunteer activities, uh, I've worked for 25 years in insurance companies. I've been an investment analyst, uh, product manager in retirement. Uh, I could bring some of that background to Torrington. So w what I'm trying to focus on and maybe what we need to f really think about as a city is economic development. So we need to, we know what we want for education. We know we, what we want to do with paving the roads and infrastructure. But what we need to do is we need the funding. And we can't do that without growing our tax base. We need to entertain companies coming to Torrington. We have everything. We have affordable housing. We have infrastructure. We have water, sewer. We have everything that's working. We have to say we're open for business. And we have to start acting that way. We don't have a hotel downtown, Steve. <laughs> um, what, uh, what plans would you bring to the table to resolve we, that issue? We, we have to really look at businesses that are shopping around for a community to put their business here in Torrington. It's not just based on a single hotel. We have 50 square miles of development we, that is, is ready to be developed. We have Route 8 going down the middle of town with three or four exits on each side. This is a really good regional asset. We have towns up and down Route 8 scooping our business that they looked here in Torrington, they passed on us. We need to uh, have those conversations with them and find out, okay, what don't we have that you're not coming here? So have, you, have you gotten any feedback on that this far or? Well, sometimes the, the feedback was you weren't ready to move fast enough. Mm. We have to say we could get it done. We have to change that attitude that we could get this done. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to know they're going to be dragged out into a long, drawn-out process. They need to know you can act on it and achieve what they need to do within a defined time period. Every business needs to operate that way. They, they need that defined for them. Can you help us? Mm -hmm. And they're mm -hmm. calling us to, mm -hmm. to find that out. Mm -hmm. We need to answer that call. Now, uh, downtown, um, some people feel is vital, not only to Torrington, but vital to the region um, uh, in serving as a, uh, an urban attraction for the residents uh, 
that surround Torrington. Mm -hmm. What's your feeling on the development uh, of downtown? I, I think it's moving along. I, I think you, you look at Warner Theater, Nutmeg Ballet. We have kids play across the street from those. They just expanded. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing great things. People are coming from far away to attend uh, these venues. Mm -hmm. And now we have Five Points Gallery. They, mm -hmm. They've been doing a tremendous uh, work with you know, occupying downtown with all sorts of art galleries, and now they have Yukon Branch. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at community development, you usually need to hit a few bases. Do you have a hospital? Do you have water? Do you have education? We had Yukon Branch, we lost it. Now we have Five Points Gallery. They're bringing education back mm -hmm. uh, to that branch, and that's gonna be fantastic. Now, when you're talking about water and sewer, uh, there's some issues uh, that are uh, on the table right now in terms of uh, how the city can maximize um, the potential users of the sewer. Um, what are your thoughts about how Thorington can be um, Mm, let's say uh, shrewd <laughs> in terms of uh, getting other communities to solve an issue that is affecting all these communities equally. Well, I think we have to be careful. It's these are our utilities for our town built on our tax dollars. It took generations to develop this. Mm -hmm. uh, to give it away to a neighboring town because they have a problem and you're pressured by the state, they, some of those issues needed pushback mm -hmm. to say, no, it's n at no benefit to Torrington if it was all we did was take on additional risk for no compensation, mm -hmm. we should be saying no to that mm -hmm. arrangement because Torrington needs to come out ahead in this. Mm -hmm. you know, if you look at, uh, solving problems, they need to partner with us and actually help us too, to do that. So we just can't take on risk for the neighboring suburban towns. Mm -hmm. We need to compensate it for those risks. Mm -hmm. I did say no. I spent uh, on the Woodridge Lake issue, and you know this because you were in attendance almost every single meeting, you know, and hats off to you for doing that. Um, but on the city council, uh, working with a guy named Mike Banzerick, who was you know, an engineer and provided a lot of the data on this, this Woodridge Lake um, sewer development, mm. to me, um, was, it, was the kind of project that you know, uh, clearly required the city council, which is also the WPCA, the Water Protection Control Agency, the one and the same in Torrington, right. which is something for people in Torrington to recognize, mm. is that when you elect people for the city council, okay, this November, you're also electing people to sit on the WPCA. It's one and the same. And if anybody is, has been following the progress of this development, Woodridge Lake, a very wealthy town, very wealthy community uh, in Goshen, you know, as part of Goshen, uh, basically uh, petitioned and used a lot of its, its political leverage to get a, uh, a sewer line extension from, you know, from their their sewer district because they couldn't solve their problem themselves since 1989 when the DEP asked them to take control of it and they finally pushed it through to run a, a sewer line all the way down um, Goshen Road cutting through for a mile and a half a reservoir on the west side of Torrington literally running under pressure their soup raw sewage you know thousands and thousands of gallons a day to hook up to the Torrington intercept down at Riverside Drive and as a member of the City Council um, working with Mike Banzer, you know, I took the position on the council time and time and month after month and finally, you know, uh, that if this is going to be the case, then Torrington should be compensated for that risk. Because mm -hmm. that is the only thing we're getting out of it, is, is would be compensation. Run it like a business. You know, take, we, Torrington has one of the finest, people don't like to think about it for all the obvious reasons, but we have one of the finest infrastructures in terms of processing you know, wastewater Aquifers. in the state of wow. Connecticut. Yeah. Absolutely, it goes back, and that goes back generations because our parents, our grandparents, generation after generation of working class people understood that you have to, you know, you have to maintain, you have to overbuild, you have to protect this because it's vital. Yet, this wealthy community, which 
literally created its own lake back in 19, whenever it was, 74 or something. Mm -hmm. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. And when the po you know, problems started occurring, they said, well, we'll just go to Torrington. So my point is, it's important who you elect to the city council because you need to figure out who's going to put Torrington first. And, I, and, and you are absolutely right, is that we sh I, I wish I'd gotten more support to do what you are proposing, which is that turn to approach it the, as a business deal with Woodridge Lake, that if you want to do this, yes, you can, but you are going to pay us for this service. You know, we got uh, Sam Slaby on the line. Let's talk to Sam. Former Get, host. Former host. Yeah. Uh, Renaissance man that he is, ladies and gentlemen. On the line with us here tonight at City Views, it's the man, it's the legend, it's the myth, Sam Slaby. Good evening, Sam. <laughs> Thanks for that very overblown introduction. <laughs> <laughs> but my, uh, I've got a question that's sort of related uh, to the discussion on the Woodridge Lake sewer system. Uh, I've never understood why Torrington, which is really the commercial center of one of the richest counties in the country, not just the state, the country, has always acted like we're a uh, you know a poor cousin somewhere along the way. Um, we're recognized as a center that has the infrastructure, that has all the all the services. Uh, whenever we're needed by the outside towns, for instance, mm -hmm. I think that I think what's going on with with, with the uh, Woodridge Lake sewer system is a good example of that. Why is it we haven't been able to take advantage of that in a more, in a, a more uh, beneficial way to the city of Torrington? Uh, what is it that we need to do that we're not obviously not doing well enough to, to, to get the surrounding towns to, to recognize and utilize Torrington as the center of a very vibrant county and and bring more business from these out of, uh, these areas out of town into Torrington. I know a lot of people who live in, in, in our surrounding towns who when they when they want to go shopping or they they, they, they go to uh, they go to Hartford, they go to Massachusetts, um, they'll go they'll, they'll go to Waterbury of all places and not really support our local business. What is it that we have to do to convince these towns how important Torrington is to them and and, how, and in order for us to maintain these services that they take advantage of, that that Torrington has to be, be, be recognized more for the great city that I believe it is. I'm going to hang up now and, and let and, and let, uh, You're going to listen to our answer off the air? Paul and Steve uh, respond to that. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sam. I'll be in touch. And uh, okay. keep keep that uh, bottle of rosé cold for mm. me, all right? <laughs> You're easy. Rosé is easy. Anytime you want to come on over. If you'd only smoke cigars, I mean, oh, it would be perfect. But, uh, anyway, good to talk to you. Thank you, Sam. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> I have an answer to his question. I believe that the region wants to see downtown Torrington flourish. And if you make the connection between services and market value and outcomes, where these cities can see that, obviously, in my opinion, I, they do need to pay for the service. Mm -hmm. But not only are they paying for the service, they're helping to build the infrastructure downtown for the city that is going to help revitalize the region. And those are the components of the arts and culture community. Mm -hmm. And then once you tie in the tourism aspect, that I think the surrounding communities are looking to Torrington for leadership for. We, we need an economic plan both on a state level and a local level to accomplish these things. We need to understand what our leverages are and use it. We have reciprocal arrangements with our neighboring towns for fire and police. We should be asking something for that. It's an easy ask. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I think the answer. I mean, this is a political year, and we are here to you know advocate for a certain political position. And I think I think the answer in a different context, in a different way of putting it, is people in Torrington have got to go to the polls in November and elect to the city council people who will put Torrington first, who will demonstrate that they're putting Torrington first, not just say it like it's a bumper sticker or some kind of feel-good piece of junk campaign literature that we're right. going to hand out ad nauseum at your door, which means nothing, but actually look at positions people have taken, votes they have taken, um, mm -hmm. stuff they have advocated for. And if you don't think, I'm tired of, <laughs> I'm tired of the opposite being true, of, of people saying that Torrington is part of a greater Litchfield County, uh, you know, and that, you know, we have an obligation to help them with this, we have an obligation to help them with that, we have an obligation. That's all well and good when they need us, but where are they when we, we want them. something from them? Where are they, you know? And, and specifically to the sewer system, you know, we just had, in addition to the Woodridge Lake, there was just a hookup from, a, you know, a Harrington private company that's putting in, you know, an apartment building, right? They bought a strip of land, a long strip of land, to develop, you know, um, for-profit apartments along the uh, torrington Harrington border, and they're going to bring their sewage, you know, into Torrington, tie into our thing. And it's very, it's very, very frustrating because we will then, now, because it was approved, get their sewage and process and clean their water for, and, and, and those people will pay the same, no more than the people of Torrington, and all that tax revenue generated from that project will go to Harrington. And there's going to be others because I, we were told that this is going to expand down along the borderline, okay? And this kind of thinking drives me crazy. Right. You know, for how does, you, people in Torrington have got to elect people who are going to fight for Torrington, put Torrington first, not, you know, not take this sort of global, you know, uh, we're part of Litchfield County and we're all in this together. Because I guarantee you, th the other surrounding communities, the wealthier communities around this town, they don't see it that way. Well, what I appreciate, appreciate about what you just said though, Paul, is that you didn't make a partisan ask. No, it's all absolutely about not. Absolutely person. not. Person. It's all about what issues are going to impact your community. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we can't take this call. Um, if Doug can let him know that, unfortunately, we can't take the call. Jack, can, can I just throw out a question? Absolutely, sure. If they voted yes for yes. that sewer prep, they should have to explain why right. that's mm -hmm. good for Torrington. You should, how you vote, you represent the citizens, explain your vote. Absolutely. We know why. We shouldn't be voting for that. Right. Why did you vote for it? Well, I, I agree wholeheartedly. And I, I think that in this uh, environment that, that we're in, we need to allow people to explain their positions too. Mm -hmm. You can't just, you know, automatically jump on an issue and demagogue it, not knowing the delicate details that are, that are involved. And that's what we want to try to do here on City Views is bring out those issues, clarify them more so that you as a member of the community can make a more educated vote when you hit the polls. Mm -hmm. So, I, gentlemen, I wish we had more time. Okay. Um, and there's nothing to say we can't bring you back after the election. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair, Fair enough. enough. Fair enough. You know, enough. but uh, we appreciate it so much. Uh, city Council Member Paul Cavanero and uh, candidate for City Council Stephen Ivane. Uh, Thank you. Don't forget, November 5th, it'll be here before you know it. But check out City Views each and every Tuesday so you can know what's going on. In the meantime, on behalf of my co-hosts, Weibo, Melissa, Dan, Catherine, Steve, the whole crew, we'll see you back next week. If it's happening in the city of Torrington, check it out on City Views. We'll see you. It's about that time. City Views, City Views. What's happening in your city? City News, City News. City News, City News. You got love for your city? City News, City News. City News.